Hello, my name is Zachary Norman, and I am here to teach you how a first responding officer deals with a crime scene. In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how an officer deals with witnesses, how they deal with suspects, how they deal with victims. I'm also going to be teaching you how to deal with the media, the legal issues involved, and the importance of a police officer's notebook. What is a crime scene? A crime scene is any location where one or more of a series of events involved in the commission of a crime occurred. This can be a location where a crime was actually committed, where evidence of the crime was located, or anywhere evidence of the crime is known to have been previously located. The first officer to respond to a crime scene is the officer that is in charge of the crime scene. Prior to exiting the patrol car, an officer should request for dispatch to send additional officers to help manage the scene. You should also instruct dispatch to notify persons such as your supervisors, identification officers, and if need be, medical personnel. Your next step is to respond immediately to those who are injured and make sure that no one else will get injured. Next, you need to obtain all names, addresses, and phone numbers of potential witnesses. An officer will then secure the scene by setting up a cautious perimeter. As new officers arrive to the scene, you should assign them to help monitor the health of the injured person. This officer will also gather as much information as they can from the witness. Assign another officer to stand guard over any found evidence to prevent contamination until the forensic team shows up. So if the suspect is left before you arrived, ask the witnesses questions about any details on the suspect. Prepare a rough sketch of the crime scene to depict any location of any of the evidence. So when the witness is able, this is when you begin an interview. And in the interview, you want the witness to be doing most of the talking. And when you're doing this, you're going to follow the rule that is called the 90-10 rule, where the witness is doing 90% of the talking and the interviewer is doing 10%. It's important to remember that it is the witness's information that you want and you want them to be doing most of the talking. Be conscious that the interviewer can be the biggest impediment to a successful interview. Witnesses may have a difficult time remembering an event, so try associating the witness's memory with time, place, or activities that the witness may have been doing during the time. And you should always ask open-ended questions. The who's, what's, where's, when's, and why's. And they always try to avoid leading questions. They suggest the specific answer, and we don't want that. When dealing with a suspect, you will begin with an interview in a similar manner as a witness, the 90-10 rule, all of that. During an investigation interview, if at any time the suspect is telling lies or is the story just not adding up, or they're making statements that only the offender would know. That is when the interview turns more into an interrogation. But an interrogation is a topic for another day. Right now, we're talking about the process of the first response to a crime scene. It is important that the suspects are removed from the crime scene as soon as possible. Hey, I forgot my wallet downstairs. Do you think you let me back in? Go get it. Never allow a suspect to re-enter a crime scene once they have been removed, unless they have the permission from a police officer. The notebook. It is the most important piece of equipment on an officer. It has in it all the information on the case, including times, locations, evidence, and more. When an officer takes notes, they should be taken at this time of the observation or event. Once a notebook entry is made, it cannot be altered or amended in any way. Errors require a single line through with initials, and the initials are those of the officer. Pages are not to be removed from this notebook for any reason. That is very important. There are no legal search requirements to search a crime scene, unless the offender is known to have legal control over the property or property interest in it. Common law authorizes first responding officers at violent crime scenes to enter without a warrant to perform a search 
for victims, offenders, any weapons to ensure safety. As previously stated, once officer backup arrives, you will instruct them to watch over any evidence. However, if there is no other officers on scene, what you will do is you will secure the area around the evidence with tape, cones, anything to block the area off. I don't have gloves on me right now, but when you're dealing with evidence, it is important to put on gloves so that you're not going to contaminate any of the evidence. When you're dealing with the media, the first rule is that you must never lie to the media. You can say things like, I don't have that information, or confirm to the media that a serious event has occurred, but don't lie. And also never ignore the media. Give the media nothing, and you give them nothing to lose. They will conduct their own investigation, and never display favoritism in the media. Hello, thank you so much for watching this video. In this video, you learned about how a first responding officer deals with a crime scene when they first arrive how they deal with suspects, how they deal with witnesses, and how they deal with victims. Also, how they deal with the media, the legal issues, and the importance of a police officer's notebook. I hope all this information was very helpful to you, anyone who's watching this video, and thank you for your time.